hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you're new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on your notification bell to be notified when i upload new videos so in today's tutorial i'll be showing you how to make this stylish skirt and the name of the fabric i used is a crepe fabric so for this skirt you can decide to use just one color of fabric but i made use of two colors which is two shades of purple and the most interesting part of this tutorial is that you can actually attach the skirt part to the upper part of the top to form a complete gown. So let's get started. Please take note that the amount of fabric I used is one and a half yard, but for a plus size person, you can use two yards. And this is an illustration of how the skirt should be. And these are the essential measurements we need. For the horizontal measurements of the skirts, we need the waist circumference, which is 26 inches, the hip circumference, which is 36 inches. Why for the vertical measurements, we need the waist to hip line, which is 9 inches. And we also need the waist to the full length of the skirt, which is 26 inches. The first step is to fold the fabric into two. To know the wideness of the fold, you divide the hip circumference by 4 plus 2 inches to an allowance. The next step is to mark the starting line. Remember that there is a waistband of 1 inch. This simply means that we subtract 1 inch before marking the starting line. So that 1 inch I subtracted will be replaced when I'm ready to fix the waistband to the waist of the skirt. The next vertical measurement is the waist to hip line which is 9 inches. And the next vertical measurement to mark is the Measurement taken from the waistline to the full length of the skirt, which is 26 inches. So I added 1 inch sewing allowance to the hem, which made it 27 inches altogether. So this is the waistline, the hip line, and the full length of the skirt. On the waistline, I'll place the waist circumference divided by 4. The waist circumference divided by 4 is 6.5. I added half inch because of the dart allowance, which made it 7 inches altogether, plus 1.5 inches sewing allowance. The next line, which is the hip line, I'll place the hip circumference divided by 4 plus 1.5 inches sewing allowance to connect the waistline to the hip line. So the reason why I'm using 1.5 inches sewing allowance to the side is because I want to be lining the skirt and it's actually a stretchy fabric, so it doesn't really need much allowances by the side. To get the M circumference, I'll subtract 6 inches from the hip measurement. That will be 36 inches minus 6, which will be 30 inches. So I'll divide the 30 inches by 4, and that will give me 7.5. Now I'm going to mark 1.5 inches by the side for the sewing allowance to connect the hip point to the M point as shown. The next step is to cut out the front piece of the skirt. After getting the front piece of the skirt, the next step is to fold the fabric into two to place the front piece on it so you can easily mark the back piece of the skirt. So obviously, I placed the front piece on the fabric, making sure that it's 2 inches after this fold. And this fold will serve as the zipper allowance of the center back of the skirt. To get the zipper allowance, I'll mark 1 inch on the waistline and 1.5 inches on the hip line. So if you are very familiar with my tutorials, you realize that I usually use 2 inches on the hip parts of the zipper allowance. But yeah, I decided to use 1.5. The reason is because I don't want it to be too protruded. On the zipper part of the skirt to avoid it from bulging. And on the M line, I marked just 1 inch to connect the 3 points together. The next step is to cut the back piece of the skirt. When making a skirt, the waistline for the front piece is usually half inch deeper than the back piece. So I marked half inch on the center point of the front piece to connect it to the side. 
Now I'm going to trim this out. The next step is to mark the darts for the skirt. Our bust span is 6 inches divided by 2, that is 3 plus half inch sewing allowance, 3.5 inches. So I marked 3.5 inches from the center fold of the front piece. This 3.5 inches I marked, I'm also going to extend that point on the back piece. So I can easily notch the darts for the front piece of the skirt and also notch the darts for the back piece of the skirt. So like I said in my previous tutorial, I said for beginners, it is advisable to mark your zipper allowance before separating the front piece and the back piece so that you can easily follow up with the line when you are ready to fix the zipper before separating the front piece and the back piece so that you can easily follow up with the line when you are ready to fix the zipper. So let's work on the back piece first. To get the opening in which the zipper will be later attached to, I'll place my tape on the waistline to mark 7 inches vertically and this will be the zipper opening. Then from the M line, I'll place my tape vertically to mark 7 inches above the M line. And these 7 inches I marked will be the slit opening which is at the bottom of the center back of the skirt so your clients can freely walk. The next step is to secure from this point to this point with a straight stitch. So after I made the straight stitch directly on this line, I have my zipper opening and I also have the slit opening. The next step is to secure the skirt that to a dart length of 4 inches. The next step is to also secure the darts for the front piece to a dart length of 4 inches. Alright, so I've secured the darts for the back piece. And I have also secured the darts for the front piece. For the side flounce of the skirt, this is the fabric I'll be working with. To know the wideness of the fabric you need, you divide the hip circumference by 2. Our hip circumference is 36 inches divided by 2, which will be 18 inches. So I added extra 3 inches to an allowance because of the edges that will be sewn. That actually made it 21 inches altogether. For designs like this, when making a flounce, make sure that the fabric you are using for the flounce has similar faces for both the front piece and the back piece. Now, since we've gotten the wideness of the fabric we need for the flounce, the next step is to get the length of the flounce. So to know the length of the flounce you need, you need to place the front piece of the skirt on the fabric, making sure that the distance between the top of the fabric and the waistline of the skirt is 9 inches. So I'm adjusting the fabric because the camera cannot capture the complete table. Now to mark the lower part of the flounce, I need to fold the M of the skirt in by 1 inch. It is important you fold the M of the skirt in by 1 inch before making any measurements on the lower part of the flounce. Now I'll go ahead to mark a point on this side. And for the left side of the skirt, I'll just place my tape starting from the hem of the skirt to mark about 14 inches. So the length of the flounce at this point will determine how long you want the flounce to be. So if you want the flounce to be shorter than mine, then you should reduce the length to about 9 inches and don't use 14 inches. But if you want it to be longer than mine, you can add extra inches to the 14 inches. The next step is to connect these two points together. Alright, so you can see that cutting the flounce isn't a difficult tax. So the next step is on how to fold the edges of the flounce. Please take note that this short vertical side of the flounce won't be sewn. Now I'll take this fabric to the sewing machine to secure the top part of the flounce by folding it in by half an inch and further folding it in by half an inch. After securing the top part of the flounce, the next step is to secure this longer side vertically downwards by folding it in by half an inch and further folding it in by half an inch. Now I've secured this side and I've also secured this side. The next step is to secure the bottom of the flounce by folding it in by half an inch and further folding it in by half an inch. Alright, all three sides are secured except this side. The next step is to turn the flounce to the right side of the fabric. Now I'm going to lift the flounce to place 
the front piece of the skirt below it. So recall that I folded the end of the skirt in by one inch. But instead of folding it, I'll just use a chalk to mark one inch above the hemline. To place the flounce directly on the skirt, making sure that this shorter part of the flounce is placed directly on the points I chalked. The next step is to fold the top of the flounce in such a way that it aligns with the waistline but making sure that the waistline is half an inch above the fold. So the half inch on the waistline is the sewing allowance to reach the waistband to be attached to. So this is the stage I made the drip. On this side of the waistline, I'll mark a point and the next step is to get the center point of the waistline so this is 15 inches i divided it by two to mark 7.5 inches and on this midpoint i placed my tape vertically to mark four inches the next step is to duplicate these two points directly on the flounce after spreading out the flounce the next step is to duplicate the points i'm also going to duplicate the second point to connect the two points together now i'm going to take this to my sewing machine to stitch directly on this line i chop obviously i made a stitch directly on the chopped line the next step is to fold the top of the flounce Now I'm going to pin the flounce to the skirt so I can easily flip it over to the wrong side of the skirt. On the side I stitch, obviously you can see that there is the extra fabric by the side of the hip curve. So I'm just going to use my scissors to trim this out following the shape of the hip curve on the skirt. But I won't be trimming the other side of the hip curve because the flounce on the other hip curve won't be attached into the side seam of the skirt. Now I'm just going to flip the skirt to the right side. So obviously you can see that the flounce has taken the shape of the skirt on this side. The next step is to make sure that you fold the side of the flounces directly on the skirt in such a way that when you attach the back piece of the skirt on the front piece, it doesn't capture the sides of the flounce. So this is the only part of the flounce that will be attached into the side seam of the skirt. So like I said earlier, on this side of the skirt, the flounce won't be attached, but it will just be attached to one side of the skirt. Now the next step is to place the back piece on the front piece. Making sure that you already marked your waist and hip circumference on the back piece. Now I'll take this to the sewing machine to secure the side following the line I chopped. After securing the side, the next step is to turn the skirt to the right side of the fabric. So you can see that the flounce didn't affect the aim of the skirt and it also did not affect the waist of the skirt. Now I'll take the skirt to the sewing machine to secure the aim of the skirt with the back slits included.
All right, I've secured both the M of the skirt and the slit of the skirt. The next step is to cut a waistband to attach it to the waist line of the skirt. All right, I've secured the waist band to the waist of the skirt, and the final step is to secure the zipper on the zipper allowance, which is on the center back of the skirt. All right, guys, this is the final outcome of the skirt. You should give it a try, and I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you are new to my channel, my name is Nancy. Kindly subscribe, share, and like my videos, and also put on your notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial.